I've played Guild Wars 2 for over 20,000 hours, and I've learned a whole lot and collected just about everything in the game, so it's a perfect time to go round again. Join me in the adventures of my completely fresh account known only as the Microtransaction Enjoyer on the quest of obtaining and unlocking everything in the game, from legendary gear and mounts to living world story episodes, maps, and ultimate gem store quality of life, purely through efficient and somewhat sensible gameplay. No real money required. Okay, gamers, it's time. Enough stalling. It's time to gear some characters. And our goal during this epic, insane gearing session is to have a character that fits every single role in the game with a few extras. So we're going to have a quickness DPS character, a quickness healing character, an alacrity healing character, an alacrity damage character, a power damage character, and finally a condition damage character. And probably, and also we're going to have heal scourge, right? That's in there as well. That's in the mix too. So over the past bit, I've been playing this character, you know, I've been playing one character for a while now. The frugal fighter, the guardian, the hybrid, the healer, the quickness DPS thing. And I could have done this a lot earlier. I could have made more characters earlier. I was really getting into the role play, right? I was hardcore RPing. I was like, yeah, I'm the guardian. Look at me. I've got my weird Souls game trash mob um, appearance here. Got my extra life cape. I was getting into the RP. I enjoy playing on one character. Uh, but now... It's time to branch out. But yeah, just worth noting, I could have done this a lot earlier if I wanted to. And look at all the gear I have. Look at this stuff. Look at all the stuff that I have got piling up. Wow. Absolutely insane. We got the... Oh, this stuff's pretty good too, actually. We got the Lunatic Shoulder Box. This is the Halloween set. This is Stat Selectable Exotic. That's actually account bound, by the way, too. This is quite special for exotic gear. You can actually move this gear around if you want to. We've got loads of bladed armor from Verdant Brink, which is stat selectable stuff. Very, very useful. We have a whole bunch of ascended uh, items that from Fractals and Strike Missions. Some ascended armor from Fractals as well. As you can see, stuff has been piling up a fair bit. It absolutely has. Uh, so, let's see what we can do. I haven't prepared for this, so we'll try and randomly uh, make sure we get as much ascended as we possibly can on all of our characters. This is where we're going to be cashing in on a lot of stuff. You'll notice my inventory here as well is full of eternal ice shards. That's really going to help out with our accessories and some of our ascended rings and stuff like that that we might need. We've got some rings in the bank as well. I mean, honestly... Screw this. Let's just try and gear some stuff. So, number one. I actually want to refine my firebrand a little bit and turn it into a proper healer. So, basically, I'm going to be going for minstrel on this guy. Uh, so, first things first, I'm just going to go ahead and copy a build template and we'll just paste it over there like this. So, we now have... We can use some of these items. We can basically reuse it. I'll probably keep some of it uh, celestial, at least for the time being, but... Bear in mind, we can just for free change some of this stuff. In fact, I'm going to do givers for even more boon duration, actually. Uh, but we'll just, we can just go ahead and turn this over for free because we have the legendary backpack and the legendary amulet as well. So that's obviously a good start. Next up, I want to change my weapons because we're pretty good to go here, right? I want to get some monk runes, uh, I think, at some point for some of the stuff. But for now, we won't worry about that. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I want a mace and a shield for this. Now, I actually did get, I was doing the boot camp, I was doing some raid training, and I got an ascended healer's shield. So I can go ahead and get that. I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this minstrel as well, because uh, I want to play this character in world versus world, uh, and minstrel gear is really good there. And because I can't change the stats on this, it means that I kind of want to have something that works in both of the game modes. And uh, Givers is good, but Minstrel is really nice because it gives you that massive effective hit points that we really need for World vs. World. So there we go. Let's get the shield in play. That's going to replace this. And we want to get a mace too. So let's see. Do I actually have a mace? I don't think I do. I just have a random ascended weapon chest. You know what? Here we go. Let's just go ahead and burn this uh, right off the bat. Ooh. Oh no, it will only give us a random stat. That's actually mildly annoying, but we can do a trick here. I think what I'm going to do is we'll just change the stats on this. Yeah, I'll just change the stats. So I will just pick anything random. We could actually just leave it as celestial for now, but I'll pick this. We'll go for a mace. Here we go. There is the mace. And what we'll do is I'll just change the stats on that. 
So... <laughs> Oh, I hope I actually have the recipe. Oh, no, I could just buy it, I think. So, here's the deal. As many things in Guild Wars 2, there is a slightly hidden, weird thing that you can do. You can change the stats on ascended items in the Mystic Forge. Here is how it works. So, for a weapon, we put the weapon in with an inscription of the desired stats. Ectos and Anthology of Heroes, basically spirit shards. And the same thing for armor. You put the armor in, an insignia, five globs of ectoplasm, and Anthology of Heroes. So, what do we need to do here? We need to create a thing. Oh, and I don't have weaponsmithing on this character. I think I only have it my Revenant. That is okay, though, because I can log on to my Revenant. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go and create ourselves a, a minstrel inscription. Here we go. Let's do that. This is definitely a, a, a neat little tip, you know, because sometimes you get the wrong stat. You're like, no, my ascended gear dropped, but it's a totally worthless stat. Well, good news. For a very low price, you can make that, you can make that go away. That cannot be a problem. So do we actually have the thing? Yeah, I guess we need to actually buy the recipe. That's fine, though. I think it's very cheap. What is it? It's minstrel. Wait, I, I think you can buy this, right? If you can't, we just have to go and unlock it. Um... Inverdent Brink, I guess. Oh, maybe we do have to get it from the map, actually. Uh, right, recipe. Oh yeah, the recipe is account bound. But good news, we can go buy it. Let's go. So, where do we get the recipe from? Simple, the wiki is to the rescue here. You buy it from the Itzel Mastery Venice. We need to have the frog speak of the, uh, the Itzel language to get this, but... Don't worry, I already have that. You can also get it from World vs. World, see? Look at that. But I won't do that, because that would be pointless. Uh, okay, let's go. I'm going in. How do you all keep Fury with Mace? Um, honestly, Fury is so free, most of the time, you just use the shout, and that will pretty much get you uh, most of the way there. Uh, sometimes, obviously, you will want to use the axe if you, like, desperately need fury. Uh, but, to be honest, a lot of the time that's not going to be necessary because so many things give fury these days. Okay, and take a look at these, by the way. These are all stat-selectable exotic gear for 500 airship parts and 1 gold. So, we can actually get anything we want with this gear setup. So, very, very useful. We'll be doing this down the line, actually, um, to uh, just fill out any kind of gaps in our gear that we can't use ascended for like this is going to be really important for actually gearing this out so good news let us buy our recipe uh there we are oh, i need to actually buy the right one here so minstrels or a calcum imbued inscription weaponsmith job done i love to see it i actually guess i might as well get well yeah, I can make that with Armorsmith. I might as well get all three of these, I guess. I don't think I need the jewel because we can actually just buy those directly with gold. I'm not going to craft those, but I guess we might as well buy the armor thing and the uh, the armor thing and the weapon thing. So now we can actually use these inscriptions to turn any of our weapons or armor into minstrel if we so desire it, which is obviously quite good news for us. Weaponsmithing. Let's go. Minstrel. Crafting recipes are account bad, as you can see. So, what do we need here? I wonder if I could actually craft this. I guess I actually can. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, I'll just press craft all. Oh, look. I can level up my weapons for thing even more. That's crazy. That's so wild. Might as well do this. We just save a bit of gold in the long run. Craft five of these things. Here we go. Boom. Now we have all of that. I need to get a freshwater pearl. These, these used to be brutal, by the way. Back in the day on HOT launch, Freshwater Pearl was no mercy, right? No mercy. But these days, nowhere near as painful, which is, you know, that's good news for us, obviously. And they were like eight gold each. So changing the stats on your weapon, it was uh, maybe not exactly worth it. Okay, here we go. Job done. Now that we have all the materials, we can make the thing. And we'll probably be repeating this process a fair bit, but yeah, that'll do for now. We don't actually need that much minstrel gear. I'll probably have my heal mech just in Celestial, because I actually have the boost gear on that character. There's no real need for me to actually do anything else. So there we are. We use 10 spirit shards for this too. 
And then we can put the mace in with the ectos, the inscription, the anthology of heroes. Boom! We've got ourselves McLean's flanged mace, which is now going to be that minstrel. And this, this is a long time coming. I've been, I've been doing a lot of stuff like fractals and even some raids. And I've been like, I want mace shield. Why do I not have mace shield on my heal firebrand? It's killing me not having this. But good news, we do now actually have it. So yeah, we have enhanced our firebrand build quite significantly. And I'll just pick up the appropriate sigils. It's going to be transference sigil here uh, for this. And we'll get a concentration sigil as well for even more boon duration on this up. And I will eventually uh, probably swap this armor out and get some monk runes on uh, this setup as well. Let's get concentration sigil. Here we go. Very nice. I'm not getting legendary runes. That's a little bit... We're a little bit too early in the day for that, gamers. Right. Uh, wait, did I not... Did my transfer and sigil not buy? What the hell happened? Did I somehow just fail to press the button? I think I failed to press the button somehow. Okay, good news. I didn't fail to press the button anymore. Right, transference, concentration. Lovely. And now we have a significant improvement to our heal firebrand setup. More Aegis, more healing, better protection uptime as well. Because both these abilities here apply prop. We have very good access to regeneration as well on Mace 2. So all around, a significant upgrade when it comes to these kind of hard heal situations where we want to be full healing instead of a more hybrid build like we've been playing for a long time. So really nice pick up there. I think I'll actually leave it uh, for a while. What I might do is pick up another build template and actually have like a specific world versus world build. There we'll be using a lot of energy sigils. Um as opposed to uh, transference and concentration. But for now, we'll leave it like that. I might come back to this a little bit later, but certainly a nice place to be in for PvE. And again, we are going to be doing some dungeon grinding, which will be fun because we need to get ourselves some monk runes. So we might do a whole bunch of dungeons later on just to clean that up a little bit. Okay, right. Let's do the main event though, um, because we are going to gear one of our characters uh, in Ascended, right? and that's going to be the Rev. But before I do that, let's go ahead and do some shopping. Uh, right. Here we go. So, I have been hoarding Eternal Eye Shards. But why? Why have I been doing this? What's going on? Well, it's quite simple. Um, you can actually get unlimited amulets and accessories from Bureau Marches in exchange uh, for Eternal Eye Shards. So, Eternal Eye Shards... As we all know, you get them from Bureau Marches doing both the meta events, Drakkar and the Winter Storms. Both are really good for them, actually, by the way. Definitely hit those events every day. And you can get high rolls, big money. But you get the eye shards for strike missions too. Daily strike missions, hit them hard. As you can see, I have many. I have many eternal eye shards. And this means that I can pick up the uh, Asgur's Amulet and Asgur's Talisman. Now, the Amulet is from basically doing the Bone Skinner quest where you have to feed the Coden. Uh, so he doesn't turn into a bone skinner. After you do that little collection, it's called the hunger. After you do that, you can get the amulets. This one, the talisman, you have to run around in circles finding all the idols, right? Get your blish hut on, finish the idolatry achievement, job done. Love to see it. But then you can get infinite of these things and it's pretty good. Uh, and as you can see, it only costs you 375 eternal eye shards and 56k calm, which is absolutely nothing. Now you might say, but hang on a minute, didn't you get all of your accessories by buying this from Dragonfall for converting your eye shards into season 4 currency? And you'd be correct. I did do that. But the only reason I did do that was because I couldn't bring myself to run around pressing F and do idolatry uh, so early on in the series. But now I found the mental strength. And let me show you why that's value. You need 150 uh, season 4 currency to buy an accessory. So in other words, you need to do this 15 times. We need 150 Mistborn Motes. But look, that's three times as many Eternal Ice Shards. Bad deal, not good. Well, it actually is, still is a good deal because we can use this for all sorts of things like completing vision um, without having to grind the maps and, of course, getting rings and amulets and stuff like that if we, for some reason, run out of eternal ice shards. Well, well, actually, not that. One thing to note here is this is unique. It means you, you're still going to need another accessory, right? You can only use one of these per character, but yeah. We'll still need to do a little bit of conversion, but we can save ourselves a lot of juice here. Now, let's think. 
How many of these do I need? How many of these should we buy? I'm gonna buy three. Okay, we're gonna buy three. For now. And we will share them out amongst our characters. This, by the way, guys, is a classic case of... Uh, we're just gonna YOLO, you know? I'm not gonna plan this. If I bought too many, unlucky. If I didn't buy enough, I guess I'll come buy, back and buy more. I guess not buying that many is the sensible play, but... Who knows? Right, three. That'll do for now. I'm gonna put those in the bank. And then it's time to relog and do some ascended gearing. It's gonna be good. And the good thing about these, as you can see, it's all stat selectable. Look at that. Any stat in the game. How good is that? It's beautiful. We have a surprising amount of ascended gear though. That's the good news. Right, Revenant time. Let's go! So, the Berserker Rev build, it's pretty straightforward to be honest. Uh, it's basically a mixture of Assassin, Berserker, and Diviner. So, first of all, We'll get the legendary stuff going. So, let's see. I'm just going. Good old hardstuck.gg, guys. Here it is. Power Quickness Herald. Here we go. Let's make this happen. So, we need a Diviner back piece. Easy. Diviner. Boom! Okay. Oh, I think I made the Amulet Diviner too. The Amulet wants to be Berserker. Okay. Easy. Berserker. Nice. Uh, okay. Good, good. So, now we need rings. The ring needs to be assassin, and one needs to be diviner. Well, that's mildly annoying, isn't it? That is okay, though. Uh, and actually, look, spoiler alert here. Uh, we're gonna want about 30% boon duration. The bills on hard suck go a little bit over cap just to give you some breathing room, but it's gonna be about 30% boon duration. Give or take. That's the way it's going to be. That's how we're we're operating here. But I won't worry about that yet. Let's see what we've got. Let's see what we can actually throw together from the items that we have. Uh, and then we will go from there. Now, I do actually want to go full Ascended on this character because I can actually play multiple, um, multiple uh, things. With this guy, I'm going to use the same gear set for Power Quickness Herald and a Power Alacrity Renegade, which is going to be good for Fractals. So having Ascended Gear for Fractals is going to be really good on this character. So that's the reason I'm going in this direction. You could do this with Engineer as well, of course. Uh, you could you can play Mech and Scrapper with basically the same gear set. But anyway, we've got a Living Water Sword, because we want Sword Sword. Do I have two swords? I do. So that's, oh, that's our offensive weapon set there. Do I have a Staff lying around? I think the answer to that question is no. Which is a bit unfortunate, but obvious. Oh, actually, do I? Well, I guess I can use a weapon chest, right? And then just convert it. Yeah, that might be what we're doing here. Because, we, of course, we can repeat the process with our conversion. And do the same thing there. So I think that's what we'll do. Let's do the Tequaddle. Let's open the Tequaddle's hoard here. Here we go. Let's go. Okay, so I need a staff. Spire of the Sunless. Ooh, nice. Okay, what do these weapons have to be? Berserker, nice. Customize, Berserker. It's also worth noting that it's really good to have uh, Ascended for power builds, because uh, power builds get a lot extra out of Ascended because the weapon strength, this number here, is higher on Ascended. And that means uh, that the your, that, that kind of gets funneled into the damage calculation. So not only do you get value out of the extra stats from Ascended, you also get more weapon strength. Condi doesn't really care about weapon strength that much. It does a little bit, obviously, but not that much. So Ascended on power, it's very good. Sword, sword. Nice. Let's convert this staff over, shall we? We're just going to do the same thing. Get in there, Spire of the Sunless. Boom. Lovely. And we now have a shiny new Berserker Zoja Spire. Oh, yeah. Zoja. Lovely. Okay. Uh, next. What are we doing next? Um, let's see. I guess we might just convert this armor. Yeah. I think that's what we're doing here. We'll just convert all this armor over, I think. So we have boots, coat, shoulders, more boots, don't need that, and helms. So we're going to have to find, we're going to have to scrabble a few more ascended pieces together. But we're looking good here. So we have a helm. We have boots. We have the shoulders, the coat. So we're missing gloves and legs. Right, well, this can just be a berserker accessory. There we are. 
got that sorted. And let's open this. Then we need to convert all of these over. Okay, so... Right, be careful here. Be careful. Buy the right items. It is very easy to buy the wrong item um, here. Make sure that if you're a heavy character, you're buying heavy. Medium by medium. Light, you're buying light. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Watch out for that. That can get you. Yeah, that can, can catch you out. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, we need our helmet. Needs to be assassin. Okay, so we need assassin helm and assassin shoulders. So, two of those. Lovely. We need a berserker coat. Okay. Easy buy. We need diviner legs and berserker boots, but we already have berserker boots because we have assaulters mist touched greaves. So, those are going to berserker. I need to pick up these thingies over here. Good. Let's talk to this NPC. We need three anthologies of heroes. We begin the conversion process. Oh, I better get my Ectos. Ah, uh, crafting. How I love you, crafting. One, two... Wait, what does this have to be? This has to be assassins. Good. And... Once again, I will give you a little bit of a, a secret here. Uh, I'm going to, you know, kind of make the gear exactly how I want it, but don't tell anyone. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it's about right, it's probably okay. All right, there we are. We have all those items set up. Can get that equipped. <laughs> this, this helmet, by the way, looks so stupid on Silvari. I don't know what it is about Silvari, but the model is just absolutely unhinged on Silvari characters. For some reason, it gets stretched out really, really like, tall, but very, very thin at the same time. It looks completely ridiculous, uh, but there it is. Enjoy. You know, we now have uh, that going for us. Okay, so we need gloves and legs and then we're basically done we just need to pick up some rings and accessory okay yes it does look very stupid uh but quite funny at the same time so i'll take it uh, let's see what's our tactic here um so this is where we're going to dip into currency we need diviner legs what's the way to go here uh let me see it would have been nice to have a chest of legs to be honest so, let's see what we've got. I think number one, we'll get our gloves for blue shards from Eye of the North. That's going to be number one. Uh, we... Oh! No! Um, this is the thing. Oh! Ah, dude. Ain't it, ain't it, ain't it. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, <laughs> I forgot about this. Yeah, we're fine. It's only the weapons that are screwed, right? Oh, ain't it. Yeah, look, th seriously guys, and this is why, if you ever feel like you're getting trolled by the game, don't worry, it's all of us. Um, duh. So, for some ungodly reason, ArenaNet decided that the weapons you get from the Ice Brood Saga strike missions would only have core stats. So, no stuff like Diviners and Harriers and stuff like that. Um... But the armor does not. So I kind of thought that it was both there for a moment. I lost my, I lost track of my brain. Um, but good news. We can actually pick up both pieces here for our Ice Brood Saga Strike mission. So we need the legs. Let's make sure we buy the legs. We want Assaulter's Chest of Leggings. There we go. And that's 10 gold for an Ascended item. Insane value, right? This is cheaper than an exotic. And then we can get our gloves. And we want the Assaulter's Chest of Gloves. There we go. Lovely. So now we actually have all the items we need. So we need um, assaulters, legs, and make sure we get the heavy armor there as well. So it needs to be berserker gloves, berserker gloves, and diviner legs. That's that. Look at that juicy boon duration there, right? We can go ahead and equip that. And there you go. We actually have basically the hard part done on this character. Uh, we have all of our armor set up, both of our weapon sets too, the swords and the staff. So now we just have to finish up the other stuff that we need. So we need two rings, um, and it's going to be, we need, I kind of griefed myself here a little bit, I'm not going to lie. 
Um, but not to worry. Like, we don't talk about that. I need one of the accessories to be a uh, diviner. But ah, it's fine. It, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine, guys. So we need an assassin and a berserker and a diviner ring. Uh, so I think the way I'm going to do about this, we could actually spend some eternal ice shards here. I think we'll do eternal ice shards. I do actually have, you, you know, I'll tell you what. No, I'll, I'll, I can do some winter berries here, I think. Let's see, what should we do here? Let's just, let's just relax and think about this for a moment. Hmm. Yeah, let's do this. That will give us unbound magic. And now we have winter berries. And I have 500 of those. We can get... We can definitely save a little bit of juice. I need... I don't want to actually spend... I don't want to spend any of these. The reason is these are really annoying to get. Like, everything except winter berries, little bit cancer. I actually wouldn't burn these that hard. Winter berries, really easy to get. There's a kind of quick farming gathering routine. Takes like 10 minutes. Like 5 to 10 minutes to do. And you can get 50 of these a day. Everything else... Honestly, a little bit annoying. Um, so, I wouldn't. And you need 250 of these for Aurora. Well, I guess you only care if you plan on doing Aurora. But, yeah. A little bit annoying. So, I'm going to avoid doing that. Uh, but here we go. Let's go pick up one of these accessories. Yeah. Let's go. So. Uh, ooh, ring is pretty efficient here. But we do need the black ice earring. Uh, we can get one of each. Yeah, we'll get one of each. I'll get one earring here. And one ring. There we go. So we can now go back, put that in the bank, and take that to our rev. And no, by the way, I will not be changing the skins. I will not. Personally, I enjoy the skins. And I'm not actually joking there, by the way, guys. I prefer the skins this way. And we need an additional ring, I believe. For that, we'll just do eternal ice shards. Nice and clean. I will not dye them either. No. No. It will not be changing in any way. I just want everyone to know that. I want you to accept that in your mind. I want you to understand it. To absorb it into your psyche. Uh, don't run from it. Don't run from it. Um, enjoy it. Love it. We need 100, um, Diflorite to buy a ring. So I need to do this 10 times. Here we go. 100 Diflorite crystals. I actually have 37, so we could skimp out a little bit, but it doesn't matter. We're going to be, but we're going to be getting some of these anyway. Okay, there you go. We now have our Diflorite crystals. So now we go to buy our final ring from Sandswept Isles. Here we go. How will we settle on one spin of the randomizer? I think that would make it worse. I think that the chat would hate that. You know, they would dislike that even more. Nice. Appreciate that. Great, Andre. Right. Here we go. Ring. Big. Gimme, gimme. Wait. Ah, here we go. Diff right band. 2,000 Voltar Magic. Ascended. 100 thingies. There we go. Nope. No dies. Look, this is the Zero to Hero, guys. We come from humble origins. We have to be humble. Sharp, humble, and wise. Wait, what am I... I'm going to put all the random ascended pieces I have in the bank, just in case I need them. Here we go. I think that's basically it. There was one ring. There was one extra ring there, okay? But look, that's more than zero. Okay. Yeah, there we are. All right. See, this is why I like playing on my main. On my main, I have permabank everywhere and infinite teleport hacks. Look how more annoying the game is without all of my OP quality of life, guys. I'm pretty sad about it. But don't worry, we'll eventually get that unlocked too. You know, this uh, this is weird actually, but the quality of life really kicks in when you're trying to gear characters. That's actually true. Like, um, when you have the busted OP quality of life, that's... Oh yeah, that's when you get the value. So we need an Assassin's Ring. There we are. And we need a Diviner Ring. There we go. And then finally, 
we need, what is this? This is an, a diviner accessory. Good. And look at that. 30% boon duration. But look, okay, now that we're here, I'm going to tell you a little secret, guys. Um, it is perfectly acceptable if you run this build, just kind of hit a few thresholds. You want 50% critical strike chance. So when you have Fury, you go up to 100% because Fury on Rev gives you 50% crit. See, look, you'll notice that I'm at 100% critical strike chance and about 30% boon duration. Okay, this will give you a little bit of a buffer. You can actually go a little bit lower, right? You can go a little bit lower than that uh, if you want to. And actually, because I do plan playing Renegade, um, what we can probably do is slap the amulet over as well to divide. And now we can do Renegade on the same build. You need about 36, 7%, I think, for Renegade. Good news. Now we have it. Take a look at that. Beautiful. So we could even actually swap it back and forth, right? Like, we could leave it like this if we want to. It's obviously fine. Um, or... We could uh, swap it back. We could have like an extra build template with an extra um, diviner piece to give us enough boon duration for our beautiful renegade build. We'll get that set up in a little bit though. But we, for now, we've got the gear sorted out. We're good to go. Okay. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of a secret. 30% boon duration, 100% crit, you're golden. Um, why is that the case? I'll actually briefly explain. 30% boon duration, that means you've got easily enough boon duration to keep up permanent quickness, bunch of fury, might, and swiftness on your team. And also, 100% crit, it turns out that being able to critically strike every single time, it's a big DPS increase. Uh, and you want to max out your critical strike chance on power builds because it interfaces with your ferocity to make sure you get big, big DPS. And you can't go over 100% crit, so that's why you don't go further, right? And it sounds obvious, but... That's, that's the intuition behind it. You go up to 100% crit and then no further because you can't have more than 100% critical strike chance. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, okay, job done. We love to see it. We're in business. Rev, basically good to go. This is actually, this build right now is basically the best build in the game, uh, in my opinion. Wait, no. Oh, I think I, but I, said, I I think I put a buy order for a Sigil Transference, and now it just bought. That's why I didn't get it. I like that. That's okay, though. Now, this is actually going to be the pain. Are you guys ready for the pain here? Uh, Scholar Runes. Ooh. I mean, Scholar Runes, well, only three gold each. I guess that's not actually that painful. It's, it's a little bit painful, but it's not that bad. You know, it could be a lot worse. And always make sure you match the runes. Six of the same rune. Definitely a good idea. And... There are kind of some alternatives to this. You could go for something like, I guess, Strength Rune or Ogre Rune. But honestly, just bite the bullet and get the gear. Scholar Runes, they give you a lot of damage. It's definitely worth it. You're going to pump really hard. And actually, if you go with stuff like the Scholar Runes, right? Do you know what this actually do? On a build like this, especially like Quickness um, Herald or Quickness Firebrand, it allows you one of the greatest pleasures that exists. You can humiliate DPS players by out DPSing them on a build like this, and you then have access to, you know, you're giving boons as well at the same time. So you do more damage to them on a damage build, and you give boons. So they go, you essentially communicate that they're worthless, and they're a DPS player, and they're basically a leech, right? And there's no greater feeling than that. It's good. Okay, and sigils. It's going to be a four sigil, and. An air sigil. Let's go. Boom. Uh, yep. You know, I'm almost tempted to have a different sigil on my uh, staff, actually. I need one for the staff as well. No! I didn't, I didn't know. I just bought three. That's fine. We can, we'll, we'll be reusing that, okay? It's fine, guys. It's fine. And sigil of air. Need two of those. Slap them on. Here we go. Honestly, though, I think it would be perfectly acceptable to have something like, an, almost like an energy sigil here. So when you swap to your staff, it's your defensive set. Because you're not really super bothered about damage when you're um, on your staff. So if you had an energy sigil, you get an extra dodge when you swap over. That alongside your, uh, the block here. And Surge of the Mists. Pretty high value. Uh, pretty high value stuff. But yeah, there you go. Yeah, and yeah, watch out, guys. Sigils don't stack when you have the same type. So, you know, <laughs> watch out for that. <laughs> don't double up. Not a good idea. Okay. Lovely. And there it is, guys. It's beautiful. The Revenant is created. Look at that. What a masterpiece of a character right there, guys. You know, the weapons are pretty good. You know, I think this looks pretty good, guys. I think uh, 
you know, you're going to enjoy the, uh, the Sylvari here. I guess you could take the helmet off. But that kind of looks weird, actually. I'm not sure if removing the helmet is good. I, I, I kind of like the helmet. I think... <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Very good. All right, enable the back piece. I, I think all back pieces look absolutely horrible. Uh, but I will enable the cape, because I like the cape. Here we go. Oh my god, that's terrible. Why does it look so bad? Why is it so short on Silvari? That's actually unhinged. Oh no. Yeah, I mean, capes in Guild Wars 2, sometimes they just... They just don't work, you know? I guess, what about this fractal capacitor? No, I don't like it. All these back pieces suck. Uh, they aren't good. Uh, we're not doing it. We're not messing around with that stuff, guys. Nope. But anyway... There we go. And I'll tell you what, I will actually be a uh, good and useful player. I will buy some consumables for this character as well. And oh, this one is amazing. I love this. You know, I love how many traps there are in the game. Check this out. So I need, uh, I need sharpening stones for this character. Take a look at this. So if you go for superior sharpening stone, look, 30 minutes, 6 silver, 75. Okay, and then look at this one. It's two silver more, potent superior sharpening stone. It's one hour duration of the exact same effect. Like, it, <laughs> I love Guild Wars 2. It's so good. I, you know, I like how the game deliberately trips up new players. I, oh man, what great game design. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna buy, I'm gonna buy 20, 25 of these. We'll get a few, we'll stock up a little bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so make sure, and by the way, this is true for the maintenance stores as well. They have like hour versions and half an hour versions, but yeah. And we need, what do we need? We can probably rely on um, ascended food most of the time being dropped, but I'll buy a few of these just in case. The butternut sweet and spicy butternut squash soup. There we are. Big DPS. But in general, um, you can rely on ascended food a lot of the time. Oh, can you get a cheaper one there as well? Can you get... I didn't know about that, actually. Because I always use ascended these days. Uh, what is it called? Spicy mower wings? Oh, look, you can! You can get the exact same effect for half the price. Look at that, guys. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Wait, may cause intermittent gastric distress. Wait, what, what do we mean by that? That's no good. But yeah, you can get the same effect. But look, classic Guild Wars 2 there, okay? Let's go ahead and get, uh, we'll get a few of those. We'll get 15 of those too. Has a puke animation? I don't really want that though. Maybe that's not worth it. I mean, I guess I'm saving gold, but I don't really want a puke animation on my character. I'm not doing that. I, yeah, I refuse. I actually decline. No, I'm not buying it. No, I refuse. I will decline the value. Okay, right, Rev, done. Uh, next. Ooh, let's do the mech. 